Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite Podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at five tips for Adobe Muse. Now some of these are features that existed in Muse and I'll just show you some tips on how to use them, but some of these or most of these are actually new features that came out in the February 26th update. There was a February 26th update with to Muse with new features, there was a March 15th update that had uh, some bug fixes and tweaks to the features. So as long as you're on the latest version of Muse, you have all the features, just run your updater and you'll have everything that I'm about to show you. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I've got a, uh, just a starter site open here. I just said new site, accepted the defaults, and away we go. So the first tip uh, of the five is that you've always had the ability to have multiple master pages and multiple document pages or site pages. So let's go ahead and create some additional site pages. We'll call this one about us and we'll call, we'll make one more or a couple more. There we go. And we'll call this one uh, products and we'll make one more and we'll call this one um, feature. All right, so now we've got our four pages. We, they're all using the A master and of course we can make a new master. But before we make that new master, let's go ahead and put some changes or things on the first master. So we'll do a file place. Uh, you've seen me do this before. We'll grab the uh, logo file, which is a ping file. That means it can contain transparency. And we'll place that, we'll scale it, We'll rotate it, we'll put it wherever we want, and away we go. Now the next thing we'll do is we'll add a menu. So we'll go to our menus and the widgets. We'll drag out a horizontal menu. And of course, since we already added our pages, the menu will come up. Now one of the new updated uh, features is that whenever you drag a widget onto the page, now it automatically pops open the options. I guess people are having an issue or hard time finding the options. So they open by default the first time you drag it on. Uh, if you ever want to get back to them after you've moved the object or gone on to something else, just click the little blue triangle and that will get you back to those options. Okay, so at this point you could style uh, the menu, which I'm going to do a styling tip in just a few minutes, but you could style the menu any way you want. Now, that should be, and it is, on all the pages now. If I create an additional master, um, I would have to start the process all over again. And that was one of the problems I had with multiple masters is that, well, I kind of want the same stuff I had here, but I do want to make some changes so that some of my pages can look different. So now uh, in Muse, in this new update, you can just go ahead and drag one master and apply it to another. So not only can you have multiple masters, but masters can be applied to other masters. So you can see that this now says B master, but it's got the A master applied to it. So what that allows me to do is to double click on the B master and then make it different. So for example, I can say uh, no fill, no stroke, but it's going to have a browser fill of an image, not a color, an image. And we can go ahead and use whatever image we want. We can say that it doesn't scroll and it scales to fill instead of tile, and it does it from the center. Okay, great. So now I would have, if we go back to our site, I would have the new B master with the new image, and it's still got the logo and the menu from the first master, and I can, of course, apply that new master to anything I want. So now the beauty of this is if I go back to the first master and I make an adjustment, like move the menu over, and maybe move the logo down. I only have to make that change once and that will now apply to all the pages because they all use the A master in one way or another. Even if they're using the B master, it's using the A master elements. So that's the first big tip that you can have not only multiple masters, but the masters can be applied to other masters. Tip number two, let's go ahead and uh, open up a page and let's drag out a text frame and we're on the About Us page. Uh, welcome to our site. My name is, I misspelled my name on purpose. My name is Terry White, but I put in too many R's. And as you can see, we have a new red squiggly underline denoting that Muse has spell check. Yay, I need that feature. So um, not only does it give us the red underline, of course we can right click on the misspelled word or word that's not in the dictionary 
and if we see the correct word in the menu, we can choose it and it will uh, update what we misspelled. You can turn spelling on and off from the edit menu. So if you're typing in a foreign language or something that uh, has a lot of terms in it and you don't want to see all the red lines, you can of course turn the spelling off. Alright, so that was tip number two. Tip number three. Let's go in, let's go back to the A master for a moment. I'm going to copy uh, this menu. Let's copy it. Let's pretend we also styled it. Actually, we can make one style change. Let's change the fill. We'll change the fill to that color. Okay, or perhaps that color. Yeah, we'll use a, a darker fill. So we've styled it. Now let's go back to the website. And, of course, the styling make change made it its way throughout all the pages. Let's go ahead and add a phone layout. And we're going to say copy the site plan and page attributes. Beautiful. And now we're going to go in to the A master. And we're going to uh, apply a, an accordion. We're going to make a mobile friendly menu. You've seen me do this before. So let's go ahead and just drag out an accordion panel. And what's, I'm just going to point out some of the new things about the accordion panel. That's what the tip is really about. So let's go ahead and get rid of the extra panels we don't need. We don't need number two. And we don't need number three. And we'll go ahead and spread this out a little bit more. And we'll go ahead and uh, delete that extra bit of content. And we'll just call this menu for now. Now, of course, when they... Um, pop this menu down, I want a menu to actually be there, so I copied the other menu, we'll just paste it in now. And of course, the problem with a desktop styled menu is that it's wide and too wide for our mobile site. So what we can do, and this is one of the tips by the way, a bonus tip, is that if you've already got a menu, no need to, um, and actually did I copy it before or after the styling, let's go back, <laughs> yep, I forgot to copy it after the styling, okay, so copy and go back. There we go. Paste. So you've taken the time, you've styled a menu, you don't want to have to recreate it from scratch just to make it mobile friendly. So you paste in the one you styled and then we just go ahead and make it vertical. Actually, no, <laughs> that's not where we do it. We do it here. Sorry about that. Vertical. And that will give you the menu with all the styling that you already did to your new menu. So that gives you the best of both worlds. Okay, so now we've got that in place. We don't need this to be as wide anymore. It can be the width of the page. We can make our menu as wide as the page as well. And we're good to go there. Now, here are some of the new features about the accordion. This is, this is really what the tip's all about. So first and foremost, um, when you go, er, let's actually get out of the menu, click on the accordion, there we go. You can, of course, say cl can close all, which means the menu can start out collapsed. But there's a new option. It can either overlap the items below, if this is checked, or push the items below down, which is the old behavior. So accordions always worked in, in the old version of Muse, or previous version of Muse, where it would push the content down if, it, if the menu were open or pushed down. Now you have the option of saying, no, 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 don't push the content down, just have the menu overlap the content. So if I say can overlap the items below, there's one more thing I need to be able to do. Okay, we're going to select the entire element and we're going to right click on it and there's an option that says master background or master foreground. So in the background that means it would slide behind the content and that really wouldn't be effective for a menu. So we're going to say that it's part of the master foreground. Okay, so now we can go ahead and collapse the whole thing and we can go ahead and test it out. So if we go back to the site, actually let's go back to the mobile site, there that is, and we go to the About Us page, we can go ahead and place some content on it. And let's grab one of the images from the slideshow. We'll use that one. And we'll go ahead and stretch that out. And now we'll test our menu. So if we preview this, which by the way, we probably need to move our header up, but let's preview it and see. Actually it worked out. Okay, so now when we click our menu, our menu comes down over the top of the photo versus pushing the photo down. 
So that's the difference in behavior. So if you, and, and by the way, it would have slid behind the photo if we didn't use that master item and say that it was part of, that it was on the foreground. So that's an important step. If you don't do that and your menus are sliding behind your images or text, then you'll know why. Okay, so that was tip number three, kind of the changes to the accordion panel. Now let's go back to the desktop site. Let's go ahead and uh, move this text out of the way here. And let's place a photo. Tip number four. And let's see, we want this one. Now let's say we want to place that photo. And we want our users to be able to, maybe we'll put a little text here that describes the bracelets or the fact that we want the users to be able to roll over the bracelets or click the bracelets to get a description or maybe find out more about them or how to buy them, whatever you want. Now, I had a user ask me, well, does Muse support image maps? And, and I thought, wow, I haven't used image maps in years. Because it's kind of like the old web where you, you know, sliced up an image and used image maps to do that. And, and the answer is no, it doesn't use image maps, but what we can do is if we go to our compositions in the widget library, we can drag out a tool tip. Now I know by the name, most people never even click on to see what tool tip is. But what it is, and if you just drag out the widget and you don't make any changes, you'll get three. You get this first one, second one, third one. And uh, these dots are controlling where the tip pops up. So first of all, we only need two since we only have two bridges, or two bracelets. So I'm going to delete the second tip. Now I can t pick up these dots. I can pick up the tip. I can move these anywhere I want. So I can say, well, this is going to go here. And the dot for it is going to go on the bracelet. And of course, I would want to spread that out. Unfortunately, you can't tilt it, but you can make it as big as you want to cover the item. The second tip. It's going to go over the second bracelet. And again, I can't tilt it, but I can make it bigger. Kind of making sure I cover the most um, likely areas that someone will click on. Let's go back to this one, bring it down a little bit, and bring it up a little bit. Now, obviously, we don't want the bracelet to hide, be hidden by the uh, tooltip buttons itself. By the way, we'll move that tip up. So what we're going to do is we need to change the states. So there's an active state and there's a normal state. The active state is the dark gray. The normal state is the light gray. So we just need to change those. Now, you could take the fill out completely, but I don't recommend it, and I'll tell you why. Let's go back. Let's go to the trigger here, and we'll see the various states. We have active, normal, rollover, mouse down. And rather than take the fill out completely, I'm just going to lower the opacity of it. And this is kind of a tip to use inside of this tip. Because if you lower the opacity where you really can't see the gray, but the gray is still there, there's 2% of it still there, that means it's easier to just click right on this and move it around again or resize it. If you make it zero, then you really got to find the edge of the frame. And trust me, I've done this before. That's really hard to do sometimes. So if we, go, uh, if we click out of it, and we've changed the uh, active state to zero on this one, or not zero, but let's say two, three, or four, just make it basically not visible, then we need to go in and also change the normal state, because the normal state is visible too. So you can change each one of your states to just be pretty much invisible to the naked eye, but there's still some content there. And we'll do the same thing. We'll change the normal state to something not visible but not completely gone and now of course you would go in and change the content of each of these to whatever you want them to be but because we left that at higher than zero we can easily click in the middle of it and still get access to those boxes without having to find the edge of the box all right so now if we preview this this is the way it looks you see nothing you would have to tell people to click on it because otherwise they wouldn't know to click on the bracelet but if they roll over the bracelet, they get something. They roll over that bracelet, they get something. And of course, they can click or click to leave, you know, to kind of leave it there. You can set that up the way you want. But very cool to be able to use tool tips.
to actually describe items in a photo, a map, um, you know, a parts catalog, whatever you're doing on your site that you want people to be able to roll over and get more of a description of, but not have it always be there so they can actually enjoy the photo. All right, so that was number four. Last but not least, number five. Let's go back to uh, the website and let's go to this menu. Now, the menus and items or in the widgets library by default have this edit together command. And that just saves you time. So for example, if I wanted to um, change this instead of it being uh, fill with gray, let's say I want to change the fill to a gradient. And I want to change it to a different color. Let's go to, there we go. And instead of it going at the uh, horizontal, I want it to be vertical. And perhaps I also want to apply an effect to it and maybe some beveling on it. Not that much. There we go. Just enough to make it pop out a little bit more. And that applies to all of the objects. So that saves you time. Same thing with text. If I go in, change the text to um, a different font. Let's um, just use Arial for the sake of example. It changes them all to Arial. But there will be times where you want to change an individual one. So what I would do at this point is I would make all the changes I want to happen to all of them, then select one, or select the group I should say, and then turn off the edit together. Now I can go in and change specific ones without having to worry about uh, it changing all of them. And why would I do that? Perhaps I want to round the corners of the ones on each end. So I want to make left rounded corners on that one, and on this one, right rounded corners. So I kind of get make my whole menu kind of like an oval shape without changing the ones in the middle to have rounded corners. And uh, so that's another just benefit of doing this. The other thing I, I want to stress, because I, I, people run into this all the time, is they get caught up in having to always try and figure out what a rollover color they want to use or should be. Okay, so let's say we want to um, use a different effect. So we're going to go ahead and turn, uh, turn our text to just a color. And then we'll go in, select this, and first of all, we need to turn back to a solid instead of a gradient. And then we just simply need to say that it has no fill. So don't get caught up on your menus having to have a background, a color, a gradient, or anything like, like that. They can just be text. And if you do a rollover, you can change each one of the states to not have a fill, and maybe just change the color of the text. So people get caught up on, you know, oh, you know, all the menus look the same, or oh, my, you know, I have to pick colors. You don't have to pick colors for the background. You can turn those fills off. So that's it for your five tips on using Adobe Muse. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.